Hey everybody, it's Gamerangi. We're back with Folklore. Last time we left off right before we going into that uh, Netherworld core. And uh, I said I might want to take care of some side quests before we head in there, because that's probably the end of the game. And I'm pretty sure it is, so uh, that's the plan. We're going to do some side quests today. Uh, but only the interesting ones, with story type stuff. There were some side quests where uh, I could get special folk for completing them, and I've done all those off screen. Uh, so don't worry about that. Do not worry about that. I'll show those off a little bit later, I guess. Hey, Gankno. How's it going? Alright, let's see. I think the only one I want to do as Ellen right now is the Pioneer. What of the academic's lover who went to the netherworld? So yeah, this quest is going to be all about Lulu, and we're going to learn more about what happened to her. So let's do it. O'Connell came round the other day. It looks like he can't forget his dead girlfriend. He wanted to know what she saw when she put on that cloak. Do you know what that means? Yes, I'll look into it. Sweet. And it seems like a lot of these story-based quests, uh, I don't actually have to do any, like, fighting or anything. It's mainly just getting from one area to the next and then talking to people. <laughs> so... That woman was a danger. She was ready to reveal the Netherworld's deepest mysteries. She was too smart for her own good. And so an assassin took her life, somewhere up ahead. An assassin? What the heck? Only the ancient forebears can unlock the cloak's true powers and meet the dead. The humans that followed them tried to do the same, but had disappointing results. Few mediums and priestesses live on in the world today. Uh, really? I saw Lulu, first messenger I've seen in a while. She was better suited for the job than most, if you ask me. But she was an archaeologist. Her curiosity spelled her doom. Killed the cat. The scholar's lover, Lulu, was here. I'm certain of it. She came to the henge before you did and took the cloak. But she wasn't as strong as you are. Poor Lulu. So yeah, I'm just gonna cut all the, like, running through the areas we've already seen and just come out the other side. <laughs> See you in a second. Okay, here we are. Hey yo. Lulu stumbled upon the deeper workings of the Netherworld, but unlike you, she thought in terms of logic. What is the Netherworld? She couldn't resist digging. Whoa. Don't dig too deep, you get stuck in the honey goo. The villagers know death secrets, but value life too much to delve into those mysteries. For Doolin, the festival of Samhain is fast approaching. An eve of evil spirits, nine days of prayers for primordial chaos. Strange how their warm reception towards an outsider like me quickly faded with the setting of the sun, for this night leads to the netherworld. I don't recognize this voice. Could it be Lulu? Man, she made it pretty far if she got into this endless corridor. <laughs> I broke my promise to the villagers and opened the door. The air around the henge was stifling and my breath froze in the twilight. But I kept walking towards the henge. What was that faint light escaping from within? The thought occurred to me I should halt my pr procession. But then I saw it. A netherworld wayfarer en en route to the land of the dead. A being not of our world. How could Lulu see fairies? I thought they were invisible to... Everybody but children. <laughs> I continued my hunt for the fairy beneath the henge. Could it lead mankind to happiness? A fairy that grants eternal life or something more? Maybe. Somehow I made it back, but my body is melting into the darkness, fading from sight. I should not have donned that cloak. It will destroy me. I was alive. Why did I chase death so doggedly? Because you're interested. 
I guess normal humans can't wear the cloak. Have problems. Ellen. Huh? To you, my successor, I leave this message. When you called, I did not answer, and for that I am sorry. Because of me, you perceive the netherworld as a world within your head. But what if it does what if it does exist? None have proven otherwise. You need to see for yourself, one way or the other. I pondered it for a long a uh, long time. All modern thinking points away from an afterlife. After we die, we decompose into particles and cease to be. So what does that mean? Do we leave no mark? No proof that we lived? I think that we do. Uh, and that is the netherworld. So I tried to find answers. Is there a netherworld? Where is it? What form does it take? I would have given anything to prove it was real. And you did! You gave your own life! Hmm. Oh, hey, O'Connell. How's it going, man? So you say Lulu died trying to prove the netherworld exists? Yes. I believe it. That's all she talked about when she was alive. She and I distance ourselves from the reality of death. Modern thinkers always do. We have no qualms about denying the afterlife. Only because we refuse to see death for what it is. But losing the one I love shattered the ideals I was born with. Now I pray for another world, so my Lulu's soul lives forever. Uh, even if it is real, I don't know if that's gonna happen, man. <laughs> but the conclusions can wait. I will keep living and studying. And I would very much appreciate your help. No problem. I will try. Oh, well, hello, Keats. I'm just teleporting all over the place. The Netherworld. Is it real? Or just a dreamy delusion? Fascinating question. If I had to go with the former, I would say the real Netherworld is this space we're in. Hmm? Traditionally, oh, other realms are connected to Earth somehow. They exist in the, on the same plane. After death, the tissue of living creatures decomposes over time into particles, which then scatter across the earth. But that's not the end. Because within those particles and the space they form are memories, feelings, a past, a soul, proof we lived. All that information has to be stored somewhere. Uh, yeah, it's stored in the, like, your neurons for those decomposed just the same. <laughs> and because what we leave in this space transcends death or the march of time, we can analyze that information later into something visual. In short, travel to another realm. <laughs> just a theory of mine. But we're only beginning to understand particles. What are you talking about? <laughs> How they behave, what information they hold. One day, we may find science and myth overlap. Uh... Okay. Endless Corridor Picture Book, page one. Finally got that. <laughs> Man. That Keats. He's, he's talking about them particles. He's just talking about them. Alright, I think that's all we can do as Ellen that I wanted to do uh, right now anyway. I'm going to swap over to Keats. Get up off that chair. Get up. Okay. Uh, Alright then. Let's see. What do I have? What do I have? I think I have maybe a couple. Whew. So, I think it's... These other ones don't really matter, but... Uh, chase away the thug and Frizzy's love. Those are the ones I want to do. So let's do this one. Chase the dangerous thug will wild away from the ancient henge. That's that guy that didn't want to talk to, or that we talked to in the pub that one time. It was like, who's this guy? He's a dangerous thug, apparently. Do it. 
Do you know Wild? He's a thug who hangs out about in this village in daytime, causing us trouble. Why? We're having a strategy meeting about this, uh, about this. <laughs> you can find out more in Warcadia. Strategy meeting? Hmm. Okay, alright. That wild is a liability. He's likely to demolish the ruins. Someone has to shoo that lunatic out of there. We've all been trying to work out how. Well, Jimmy mostly. Jimmy! Hey Jimmy, I'll talk to you last then. That man is crooked, I tell you. Who knows what he'll do? Yeah. <laughs> Who knows why he even came to the village? Uh, I don't know. Hey, d do something. About Wild? If you want to send him packing, that's simple. You just need to... F frighten him? You're so p predictable. Is that the, the, the best you could come up with? If it was th that easy, we'd have tri already tried that. So it's not that easy? Why not? Look, have to go now. Me and the, the others got plans to make. What? What? What are you gonna do? What are they gonna do? Hmm. Guess we're gonna go through Warcadia. <laughs> uh, it's just that easy. Hey, Charlie. Nothing scares us half-lives more than having society notice us. Back in the age of myth, they knew about us and we got on. But nowadays, I wouldn't be... It wouldn't be pretty. People would lose it. Ellen and I noticed you. Bah, so what? You could tell the whole world and get nowhere. Who would listen to the tall tales of a dreamy-eyed girl and a third-rate hack? Wow. What a jerk. <laughs> Thanks. So you see now? Even if we went to scare the man out there, uh, out of there, we'd only have a mess on our hands afterward. I guess? Well, if only he saw you, it wouldn't be a big deal. We don't mind at all if children see us, and the innocent ones often do, but it never causes a problem. Because no matter what some kid says, society will never give him the time of day, you mean. I think I get the rules you play by. Eh, uh, really weird rules. I see, you can't let humans see you, so you can't scare wild. Leave things to me. You g got a plan? What should we do? Go on and give him a spook. Well, I'm not all the, that spooky. How about Demona? You're really creepy looking, actually. <laughs> Scary, but not what we need. Hmm, then Frizzy? That could work. Wait, Frizzy, the ghost lady with the umbrella? She's the scariest? I don't know. Who hasn't heard the tale of the Banshee's cry? That's true, she's a Banshee. Alright, well, I'll go talk to her again. Suppose? Sounds like you're up. Go scare the man. Me? But why me? I, can, I can't show myself in front of a human being. Don't worry, I'll smooth things over afterwards. I have a plan. But am I spooky enough? You're fine, just do your thing. Stay away! A monster? Never return, never again. Ah! I, I won't, I swear it! How rude, I'm not a monster. <laughs> I'm guessing he couldn't hear that last part. Instinct still has a hold on man, tenuous though it grows. Why do you talk like that, man? <laughs> Not all on this earth falls within human understanding, and we sense when something doesn't. 
and no number of modern advances could quell our fear of ghosts. Do something about what he saw, hmm? Think about some ex explanation. It doesn't even have to make perfect sense. I will. He'll forget in time. Okay. Hi there. What's wrong? I heard you're seeing things. Not things. A lady ghost. A banshee, I tell you. Oh, that? That's just a film prop from one of the old pub patrons' outlandish collection. A film prop? Wait. By, like, completely debunking this, he's just gonna go right back to the ruins, right? Is this a good idea? <laughs> No, you're wrong. This was no puppet. Why did you come here anyway? The smell of money, mostly. My father came here. Was called here, I ought to say. He was a thug, just like me. Whisper stories of profit in his ear, and he'd stoop to anything. For example... Murder. Who did he go after? And at whose request? I can't recall, but there were... But they were women, both client and targets. Huh. But the targets got away. Fled, he told me. Uh, Cecilia and her mom? Maybe? There was a murder in the village, and secrets mean money to be extorted. But last night scared the lust for money right out of me. Understandably, dead men make no profit. And tell no tales. But he's telling all sorts of tales. Picture book, page, and a ruby. Alright. So now we finally learned what that guy's all about. <laughs> yeah, he... I'm guessing Regine sent his dad after uh, Ellen and her mom. Cecilia and her mom. That's my guess. All right. I don't I don't really know how important this is going to be. <laughs> but it might be interesting, maybe. Frizzy fancy someone, find out who. All right. It would seem that Frizzy has a crush on someone. Jimmy is so jealous. Really? I know you go and calm him down. Jimmy, you mean the fat one? Aw, oh, poor thing. He's in the endless court. No, he's right there. I can see him. I can see him right behind you. He's right there. Recognize that back fur anywhere. Yeah, there he is. Hey, Demona. Frizzy's going to pour her heart out to the one she loves. I followed her out of concern. But oh, I feel like such a snoop. Who's the lucky individual? Don't ask me. I'm looking for Ferdarig. He should be here somewhere. Up this way, I'd wager. He's hard to find. So be on the lookout. Don't tell me it's Ferdarig. Don't tell me that. <laughs> Did you hear? Sounds like Frizzy's in love. And when she falls, she falls hard. Jimmy should leave it. Here is me to tell him. You tell him. Yeah, you tell him. Ah, uh, wh why does Frizzy have to be in love with someone else? Uh, wh well, I don't care. Just leave me alone. All right. See you later. Wait. <laughs> Make up your mind. Actually, would you do me a teensy weensy favor? I just want to know who Frizzy's fallen for. Can you find out his name? Yeah. I... I... Oh man. If it's for Derek. Oh jeez. Uh oh. Frizzy's planning to summon her beloved to the audience hall. Oh my god. <laughs> and who's her beloved? She said he has horns. Horns? She can't mean Jimmy. <laughs> uh, she, but she does. Who else would it be? Frizzy has always 
had an odd taste in men. Oh look, here comes the lucky fellow now. Cue the romantic music. Oh, right on. Jimmy, 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 Jim, Jimmerino, Jimbo. I hear the object of Frizzy's affection has horns, which means me? No, that that's not possible. Oh, just make a move. What have you got to lose? Well, not now that you mention it, I'm the only antlered one here. Are they horns or antlers? So what is me? All I know is Frizzy's planning to summon her beloved to the audience hall. Hey, wh what a coincidence. That's where I'm going, I think. You don't remember? Maybe it's the destiny. Maybe Frizzy called me here. Audience hall, here I come. Do I get to go there, too? Third wheel? <laughs> How embarrassing. Well, I can't give up. Me too. What? I'm in l love with you. What? You? Don't make me laugh, you lousy pig. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, but what, what did you mean by horns? It wasn't you. The deer? <laughs> oh my god. So it was you. Stay out of this, you speckled monkey. Spectacled monkey. Oh my god. You said it couldn't get any worse, right? There's still hope. You t told me that it might be me, right? Sorry, mate. <laughs> she fell in love with that elk head. Oh my god. Ugh, how could Frizzy fawn over that stag and not me? Ah, buck up, Jimmy. <laughs> hey, you were nice to me, so you can have the, this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> I guess the deer head guy found love after all. Um, all right. So that's all the nighttime quests, I think. Uh, yeah, I think that's, yeah. So I'm going to change it to day. And we have one more quest thing, I think. So anyway, be right back. Okay, uh, before we get this quest started, I'm gonna go talk to Mrs. Lester. Real quick. Hello. The other day, Suzette returned from the Henge in a state of confusion. She's resting at the church at the moment. She can't talk to you. But if you want to know about her, ask the pub owner. Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, Paboner. Actually, I think that uh, wild guy. Oh, he left. Wow. He used to be right here, I think. <laughs> he just he just flat out left. Hey, man. Have a conversation. I think you still have a few things to put together, haven't you? That's true, I don't have all the facts yet. Why don't you follow the dead into the netherworld and get your answers there? Why don't I? Still, I would like to unravel the deeper psychology of the real killer. Ooh. Uh, okay, actually, he has two quests. Dark Impulse is the one that I'm thinking of, uh, but this one is also interesting, so we'll do this one first. <laughs> Find out about how Dr. Lester took on Herb as a patient. Okay. 
So why would someone as sick as her be in a place like this in the first place? Surely this clinic is too small to give him treatment. If you're curious, look into what happened when the doctor opened the place. Okay. Yeah, he's got like this serious illness. Why would he be in this little clinic? A little crazy. Bum, 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 bum. Bum, 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 bum. Hey there. What you are seeing now is a cluster of gathered memories. Someone died recently, no? Hence the apparition is at its most vivid. Ew, okay. Well, well, well. As I'm sure you're aware, your son has a difficult illness. I cannot care for him here. He belongs in the city hospital. Let me write a letter of referral. No, I'm sorry. Our clinic simply can't assume the responsibility of caring for your son. Uh, the responsibility of caring for your son entails. Yeah, that's, that's what I figured. It's the same story with every hospital I go to. No one will treat him. The least I can do is let him live out his last days in a place that he likes. Please, doctor, admit him into your clinic. Don't tell me that, doctor. Oh, so he's getting turned down by all the hospitals. Might as well live in a nice place. Gotcha. She's like a daughter to us all. With her mother working in the city, she's always by herself. Yes, I know. She does seem lonely. I wish there was something we could do for her. But that's life, I suppose. Her mother can't find work here. Ooh, that must be about Cecilia. Yeah, her mom was definitely in the city, alright. <laughs> Wait! Cecilia, she's gone. Will you search for her with me? I have reason to believe she's left Doolin to find her mother. It's dangerous outside the village. We have to hurry. Okay. I'll find her. Oh, Cecilia. Where are... Oh, hi. Here, have a look at this book. I'll read it to you. Okay. This scarecrow is really cute. You like it? Yeah, I wish the scarecrow was real, though. Oh, he's real. Hmm? Looks like Dr. Lester's come for us. Come on, let's go back. Everyone must be worried. Okay, Herb, whatever you say. Oh, young lovers. I mean, friends. I see. He left so he could be there for Cecilia. The poor girl. She's been so sad since her mother left the village. Herb saw that right away and wanted to cheer her up. He's such a good boy. Thanks to him, Cecilia has brightened up considerably. Teresa, there is much that needs to be done. You and I may need to reconsider our future plans, I'm afraid. You mean... Yes, I think we should admit Herb to the clinic. Of course, if you're against it, my dear, your wishes come first. You hesitated because you were worried about what I would say? Honestly, sometimes I don't think you understand me at all. I've been waiting for you to admit the boy. I've actually done all the all of the preparations. Oh, man. So Herb is actually helping out Cecilia, too. Double bonus! This photograph was taken when we first took Herb under the, our wing at the clinic. There they are. Those were the days. Oh, why? Why did something have to happen? Ultimately, it led to you... Uh, led you to close the clinic. Perhaps admitting Herb was not the wisest choice. Don't be silly. Of course it was. We'd welcome him back with open arms if only we could. Another picture book page and an emerald with a butterfly in it or something. Hmm. A little more backstory on the whole Herb situation. Nice. Alright, 
This is the main quest I was interested in. I haven't actually seen this one, so... <laughs> this should be very interesting. Determine the truth about Suzette's past and the murder. Mm-hmm. We have Suzette in the clinic at the church. Mrs. Lester is looking after her. She's fallen into a coma and won't wake up. Wow. Did Keats really knock her down that hard? <laughs> Oh my god. I think that the cause of her illness is emotional. She's been badly hurt. Uh, sure. We're relying on you to bring an end to this. An end to her coma! Just shake her really hard until she wakes up. <laughs> oh god. Hi there. Memories from half of Suzette's life are scattered around. Please save her. Like Ellen, she came to the village darkness within her. Man, this is like really laggy right there for some reason. I am assembling the minions all over the place. Why, why does my life have to be hell? Who on earth is Herve? And why did mother end up like that? That's your brother? That's no way to die. My father and brother. Why did they die? Wait. You know he's your brother, but you asked who he was? That's weird. What? What is she up to? She finally found the person she was looking for. She's writing a letter, but to whom? To Ellen. She's crazy. Doolin? The village where you can meet the dead? Something's very odd. She's up to something. I have to go after her. My mother. To Doolin. That's where she's headed. The reason why my family fell apart must be hidden there. Oh boy. I'm gonna save. I'm probably gonna battle stuff up this. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Harriet, Dr. Lester, those who must know what happened in the village in the past. Or those two must know what happened in the village in the past. And you killed them both! Like a psycho! She went to the cliff? What is she trying to do? Who is she waiting for? I see, she followed her mother, Regine. That's why she was at the beach. And Ellen appeared, followed by me. Hmm. Whoa, whoa, whoa. She's here? Who are you? It's Ingrid, man. <laughs> Tell Cecilia, I mean Ellen. Tell Ellen, save Suzette. The village's past still has a grip on her. Get help from her parents in the fairy realm if you have to. The fairy realm? Hmm. Save Suzette, huh? Suzette still hasn't woken, but she seems less pale. It's only a matter of time. But why should it matter to you if she wakes or not? This girl is responsible for what befell the doctor. My husband would have cared for a sick patient no matter what. Yes. I'll leave the rest to Ellen. You can now play the quest Dark Impulse Part 2 in Ellen's man. Sweet. <laughs> okay. He would even treat someone who murdered him? I don't know about that. Want to have a break at the pub? I could take over. Sure. Do it. This is probably going to be an extremely long video. I'm not really sure how long it's going to be. <laughs> I'm cutting out a lot of stuff, but uh, I'm already up to 49 minutes, so... 
yeah. Hopefully, this one last thing won't be too long. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, I don't think I want to do any of these. Didn't I already check these? I think I did. Rescue Suzette from the Netherworld before she is lost. Okay. Suzette is still out cold. Keith said it's your responsibility to cure her for her trauma. Of her trauma. Jeez. <laughs> he wants you to find out why she committed those murders. That's what I heard my mother say to Keats. Oh, she told Keats that Suzette did it. Oh. Yes, I'll look into it. It is my responsibility indeed. Indeed. Indubitable. Wow. I feel like we haven't been here in a long time. Keats, what are you doing here, man? Keats, thank you for all you did for Su Suzette. I didn't do anything. I just wanted to know how she ticks. I'm not welcome in the fairy realm, so your turn. Her parents are still lingering here somewhere. Ew. A husband and wife thought to have left the netherworld are lingering in the fairy realm, waiting for you and hoping you can help their daughter, Suzette. I hope I can. The fairy lord says you may use the, the audience hall as you please. He does that as a favor to you, Ellen, for your valiant efforts on behalf of the fairy realm. Okay. Hey -oh, hey oh, Charlie. When you first offered the memento at the altar, I heard the voices of the dead too. You know, that father was always thinking about his son. Mm-hmm. Oh, I know it. Listen to this. Just after you two came to the village, Keats uh, contacted the dead and heard Regine's voice. She lived a twisted life, but now that it's over, she wants to do something for her daughter. Their wish led them to the audience hall. Make Regine's wish come true! Okay. Hello. Hello, hello. You came. Thank you. Our love for our daughter keeps us in the netherworld. But time runs short. Soon we'll have to move on to wherever comes next. We have one final favor to ask of you. Please, save Suzette. Was that it? Was that it? I, I got that from the very first people. <laughs> oh, oh, here we go. Dwarf Beach. This is interesting. What does she think she's doing at the cliff? She's waiting for someone. The person coming here is the one she's always hated. Hmm? Who's there? Black clothes? Is that who she's meeting? Wait, there goes someone else. A young woman? What's going on? Who's that? She's fallen. It can't be. What happened? So Suzette was watching the events at the cliff, too. She followed her mother, Regine, to this village in search of her past, just like me. Hmm. Why did she kill Dr. Lester and Harriet? What's this? Her bag? Can't be. I see. Regine's belongings washed up and Suzette found them. She learned about the past and why her mother wanted revenge. Dr. Lester was involved in my brother's death? Uh, what? He's the reason my mother treated me like that? I... I want to scream! Why? Because I feel bad for my mother? Why should I give a damn about her? Ugh. Ugh. What, what do I do? How am I supposed to escape all this pain? Wait, Dr. Lester is responsible? What in the world? 
does that mean? And what am I supposed to be doing right now? <laughs> There's no more of those. Did I miss one? Hmm. Okay. Man, I don't know where to go now. I can go anywhere. Uh, should I go to the cliff? Might be some more of the Simonimines there. Oh, I can hear him. For one. <laughs> She's really dead. Ugh. This is where Suzette confirmed her mother was dead. At the top of the cliff? When she talked to me, she knew it was her mother. But that was at the bottom. Wait, was her mom dead before she fell? And Suzette checked on her? What? Now I order of what happened here is very confusing to me. <laughs> I'm guessing that was supposed to be at the bottom. Hmm. Man. What a mess. I... That's not where I want to go. What is that way, anyway? Is that where I came from? Never been up there. Gate it off. It's weird. Oh, but that might be the DLC. There's DLC stuff in this game, I think. Suzette's memories seem to be scattered around the village. If I gather them all together, maybe I can see her. She left the strongest thoughts in her home. And where she killed... And where she killed. Where else? Oh my god. I don't know. It could be anywhere, man. Alright, well let's... I guess do her house first? <laughs> oh, this is crazy. The netherworld? The dead? How stupid can she be? Just forget it all. Life would be nice if we could just meet the dead. But it doesn't work that way. That's why me and my mom's lives have been so miserable. We couldn't let go of the dead, and we took it out on the living. Suzette, I never realized how you felt. I must have hurt you terribly. Yeah. I wonder she was so angry all the time. Dad, you left me a letter. You did that for me, just for me. So this is my, so this is family. We should have understood it sooner. Stupid Keats. Can he mind his own business? Live the way I want to? I can't do that, Mom. I'm like you, I can't forgive them. I want them all to pay for what they did to my family. Oh my god, they're both crazy. <laughs> Yikes. This is where she killed Harriet with a string or something. Ah, now that's two people. <sighs> Now everyone involved is gone. Ah. So now she's killed Harriet. Everyone involved is gone? I said that under hypnosis. He did? Huh. Interesting. Everyone involved. So wait, how exactly was Harriet involved? Is it because she told Ellen to... To pray to the fairies? Maybe? Oh, oh wait, where, she killed Dr. Lester over here. That's right. Or was it because Harriet was outside the clinic when Herve died? Maybe that's why. Weird. 
I did it. I killed Dr. Lester. I have to get away from here. Black clothes? Who's that? A friend of the doctor's? If I bring the villagers here... Aha! So Mum was only trying to save Dr. Lester. When the villagers saw her, they completely misunderstood. And by villagers, you mean Keats? <laughs> He's not a villager. Oh man, I don't know where else these things are going to be. Maybe where we saw the video? Or where he did the hypnosis? Ah, yep. I can't believe what the hypnosis revealed. Ellen's terrifying. She killed my brother. That must be why she blocked out all those memories. Now I have to kill her. I don't have any choice. But should I? I, I don't want to kill Ellen. She's the only person who's ever looked out for me. I want to forget. My family's grudged everything. I want to start over again. I can't keep fighting back these dark urges. Suzette. Oh, she's fine killing a, an innocent doctor and crippled woman, but uh, she doesn't want to kill Ellen, I guess. <laughs> You're very picky choosy with your murdering. Oh, hi, Suzette, in the weird netherworld version of this place. Is this what a coma gets you? It's pretty nice. Sorry for all the trouble, Ellen. At first I thought you were just nosy. But you came all the way here just for me. Let's go back to the village. What's this feeling? Like I'm about to remember something. Suzette? Uh. Oh! Your memory spawned a bug. Mom, stop fighting. Let's just leave the village and go somewhere far, far away. Just leave Herb's mum alone. What? What are you saying? She wants to kill us. But mom, there's a little baby inside her. Herb's little sister, Suzette. Huh, okay. <laughs> You were so little, and you still stuck up for me? How could you remember something you weren't even around to see? Or hear? You, you weren't even born yet. That's very bizarre. How could I remember something like that? Exactly, that's what I'm saying. Unless something else did the remembering for me. Maybe Ellen. Maybe the village itself remembers all kinds of things. You were so good to me, then and now. And in return, I killed your mother. So that's why she died. Yeah, okay. And Masuka caught it. He, uh, Suzette actually managed to stab her, I guess. Because the knife was bloody when Keats knocked her down. But, like, she seemed fine right after that. And then all of a sudden, she was really in pain. So, yeah, Suzette actually killed Ingrid. Wow. Okay. I wish I could have been more like you. Suzette, you're a murderer. And you're also in a coma. Suzette says she'll give herself up when she's on her feet again. This is my husband's last testament. Give it to Suzette. It might help ease her feelings of guilt. Mrs. Lester, are you sure? He would want it this way. Is that the testament where he was like, I'm going to off myself because I feel so bad. Yeah, that, that might help her feel better. Oh. Wow, she's up and at him after that coma. I was dreaming. Maybe I should leave the village. I didn't want to kill you, but I couldn't control my urges. I'd like to begin again if I can. Uh... You can begin again, but uh, far away from me. 
This is Dr. Lester's last testament from his wife. She thinks it might ease your mind. Also, you should know, the one who told me how to save you was my mother. That's true. Bet you feel real bad now. Well, I mean, <laughs> Ellen's mom did kill her dad, so. Uh, hey, Keats. Was that it? That was the end of the quest? Alright, that was it. Okay, well, interesting. Interesting stuff. I think that's all the side quests now that I wanted to do. Unless he added another one. Uh, I don't think so. Nope. Nope. Okay, so anyway. Uh, sorry if this video was incredibly long. I've been, it's been going for over an hour for me. So, I can only imagine. <laughs> Uh, but we got all the side quests done, so next time we'll go in the Netherworld Core and start off this end game stuff that's gonna happen. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I haven't practiced any of that. I, I kind of want to just go into it blind, so it'll be interesting. <laughs> Anywho, see you guys next time.